Hello everyone. My name is Steve Emerson and I'm the Outbound Product Manager for ITOM Visibility here at ServiceNow. Today I'm going to demonstrate how you can map services in minutes with ServiceNow's automated service suggestions for service mapping. The CMDB is your organization's data foundation and it is the data foundation for ServiceNow. It is the central system of record of configuration data for your infrastructure and applications across on-premise, cloud, and microservices. Now, the most successful CMDBs are service-aware, which enables you to understand the impact of infrastructure and applications to the business. Now, service visibility is key to service operations excellence, and it enables you to make data-driven decisions based on business impact across all the use cases you see here and much more. For example, with AIOps, you may receive thousands of alerts per day, and if hundreds of them are of critical severity, how do you know which ones to respond to first? If you have your services mapped and you receive a critical severity alert for a server that has a database or an application installed on it that is part of an application service, the service will turn red on the service operations workspace. Why is this important? For each service that you map, you assign a business criticality level to it. For example, BC1, BC2, etc. The Service Operations Workspace arranges services by business criticality, so you will be able to clearly see which of your most critical services are affected and prioritize them. When you look at a service map view from Service Operations Workspace, you can see the specific configuration items that have alerts against them, which will help you pinpoint the root cause CI of the alert. As you see here, the Oracle CI on that Windows server is red. Now moving on to change management, when you are planning a change, how do you know how the business will be impacted by the change? Well, if you have your services mapped and you create a change for a specific configuration item or items, the Refresh Impacted Services feature will enable you to see the impacted services right on the change form like you see here. This, of course, enables you to reduce risk of a failed change and easily know who owns each service to coordinate the change with. If you have your services mapped, you can enable unauthorized change detection, whereby if you did not have a change opened at the time a configuration change was discovered, an unauthorized change request will be created. Now, oftentimes, unauthorized changes are the probable root cause of an outage or a degradation. Now, by default, unauthorized changes are created as emergency changes. In this example, an emergency change request was created for an unauthorized change of a configuration file. A service now stores versions of configuration files in the CMDB, which enables you to perform a comparison between between two files and see exactly where the change was made. If you determine that these changes needs to be reverted, you can open up a new change request and assign it to the appropriate team for implementation. Now I just discussed why service mapping is the key to service operations excellence with some use case examples. Now let's see how service mapping works. Our service mapping solution provides three complementary methods to map services. Together, these allow you to address a wide range of service mapping scenarios and requirements, giving you the flexibility to choose the optimal approach for your specific needs. Tag-based mapping builds service maps using discovered tags, or keys and values, from your virtualized, cloud, and containerized resources. If you have quality tag data across your resources, you can easily map hundreds of tag-based services in minutes. And if you do not have quality tag data, you can use our tag governance application available from the ServiceNow store to define and enforce your tagging policies. ML-based mapping or machine learning-based mapping uses machine learning to identify meaningful traffic-based connections to be added to service maps. This makes it ideal for bulk mapping of services from scratch and extending your top-down maps. You'll be able to reduce the amount of time it takes to build service maps from weeks to minutes. This will be the focus of our presentation today. Now, top-down mapping uses pattern-based discovery to identify service connections. This method takes the longest because it requires an application Application, architecture diagram, and research up front, and deep technical knowledge in pattern building. Because it is so precise, top-down mapping is well suited for mapping your mission critical services. Now just note that machine learning based mapping is a form of top-down mapping. Now it can be used to build existing services and also uh, extend your existing top-down maps. Let's talk about the evolution of machine learning based service mapping. We introduced ML-based service mapping with the Quebec family release, which uses machine learning to suggest meaningful traffic-based connections to be added to service maps. Each connection suggestion contains a confidence score to help you decide which connections to add. In the Rome family release, we introduced a rules engine to automatically add connection suggestions to service maps globally or to specific services based on the criteria that you define. For example, 
you can create a global rule for adding all high confidence connections to all service maps globally, or you can create a local rule to add all processes listening on a specific port to a specific application service. Around the time Rome was released, we introduced the Service Mapping Plus store application that included an application service readiness dashboard for monitoring the health of machine learning based service mapping that includes a prerequisite check to ensure that your instance is ready for ML mapping. In the San Diego family release, we introduced load balancer connection suggestions, which detects whether or not a connection suggestion is a virtual IP address, or VIP. Confidence scores for VIP connection suggestions are based on connections to resources behind the VIPs. In the Tokyo family release, we decoupled service mapping from the family release. What that means is, going forward, all service mapping innovations will be released via the Service Mapping Plus app on the store to ensure service mapping updates can be released more frequently. With the November 22 store release of Service Mapping Plus, we introduced automated service suggestions. Until today, the question of where do I begin when mapping services has been the biggest challenge. We are so excited to announce automated service suggestions, which eliminates this question by suggesting service candidates that include a pre-identified set of resources to be included in the service map. With just a few clicks, you will be able to gain business context for your infrastructure and applications, and the service maps will be kept up to date for ongoing use across the use cases we saw earlier. Now, let's see how it works. To get started with automated service suggestions for service mapping, go to store.servicenow.com and search for Service Mapping Plus. You will want to install version 1.60 or higher in your instance. We will begin on the Application Service Readiness Dashboard, which is where you can check your instance for prerequisites to see if it's ready for ML-based service mapping. And you can also check the health of the ML training jobs associated with ML-based service mapping. In addition to checking the training status of the ML jobs and the prerequisite status, we also see the mapping status of application services, as well as a graph that shows the top 10 service issues. Of course, you can dive down into each of these areas to investigate further if you are seeing some challenges with mapping specific services. In order for machine learning based service mapping to function, there are two key prerequisites needed. The first being good TCP data, what I mean by that is discovered TCP data, and the second being good discovered process data. So what do I mean by that? Let's take a look at the CMDB underscore TCP table. So if you type in CMDB underscore TCP dot list and hit enter, you'll be taken to the table of discovered TCP connections. As you can see here, it is a list of connections with the IP the listening on connected to as a type, the port, the process ID, as well as the process. And my instance here has over 15,000 discovered TCP connections. The second thing that's needed is running processes. So let's take a look at running processes. If you type in running processes, you'll there is an entry for this underneath discovery. Now with running processes, you have the process ID, you have the command, you've got the parameters, the key parameters, right? And you've got all information about the running process along with the computer. Now this is key. Both of these ingredients are sent over to our master training instance using predictive intelligence. And then we send back the intelligent traffic based connections that you want to add to your service maps. We consider these to be meaningful connections. Now, now that we know that our instance is ready, let's go ahead back to the service mapping workspace and we can go look to see if we can map some actual service candidates. Here is where automated service suggestions comes into play. With the November release, this application service candidates tab is now available. And it's not just a tab, of course. This is the screen where you can map your services in minutes. What we've done here is we've identified entry points using machine learning, and we've also included a number of resources to be included in each of those service maps. Now this list is filtered by default to show any service candidate that has greater than four connections and less than 100. You could certainly filter this down or up to show more connection suggestions here. But let's say that we are ready to go ahead and map a service. I'm gonna go ahead and map this service candidate here. So first thing you do is you click on the service candidate, and you can either preview the map from here or you could create the application service. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on create application service because we can preview the map from within inside of here as well. So let's go ahead and do that. When I click preview map, we will see what the service will look like once it is mapped. Now this is just the initial service, of course, 
uh, later on when you run discovery, there may be some rules in place that may automatically add uh, you know, additional connections to the service map. But this is what the initial map would look like. If we go back to our create application service window, we just have to give it a name. So let's call it the shipping service. Now here, if this entry point had an HTTP header, we use an nmap command to read the headers. And if there was a name there, we would put it in the name suggestion field. Since there was no header, it is blank. So based upon looking at the map, I know that this is the shipping service. So I've called it shipping. We can enter a description if we'd like. Uh, we must give it a service owner. It's not a mandatory field, but in all practicality, you should assign an owner to the service so that some one has accountability for that service inside of the CMDB and all other places inside of ServiceNow. As you can see, a number was assigned to the application service candidate. There are several application fingerprints that were included that ML has identified as meaningful connections between each other. And then at the end, we'll give it a service group name. Uh, in this case here, we don't want to add this to any existing service groups, but we'll add it to the all. We'll go ahead and click on create service. And now my shipping service is getting created after I basically clicked once, but I filled in some basic information. What happened there behind the scenes is a connection rule was created. Now earlier I mentioned about connection rules that were introduced in the Rome release. If we look at the service mapping connection rules, we can see that there was one created for the shipping service. Let's go into there and look at the criteria. This rule is set up so that all new connections that are discovered that meet specific criteria, in this case, you can see there's a lot of source process name and target process names that are aligned with this. These will all automatically be added to the shipping service going forward upon future discoveries. You can see the scope is local. That means that we have to choose a service. Of course, we chose shipping. The other choice there is global, and I can show you what a global rule looks like. Here we have a rule for adding all high confidence connections to all service maps inside of ServiceNow globally. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the service that we just created. If we go to our all menu and type in application services, we can see a list of all the services maps so far. Let's view the map. Here is what the service looks like once it is discovered. Now, once it is discovered, we have not yet set it to be able to be used inside of any applications like event management, change management, etc. Now over here on the right, you see that the status is non-operational. Let's go into the service itself and we will set that field. As I mentioned earlier in this demo, you have to set a business criticality level. So I know that this shipping service is most critical to my business. And I also know that this is now operational. You, as you can see here, the traffic-based discovery flag is set. That is because this service is being discovered with traffic-based data. But it's not just any traffic-based data, it's the most meaningful connections based upon the machine learning that calculated those connections. Let's go ahead and update that. And now we are ready to use that service map inside of any application inside of ServiceNow. So the use cases I described earlier in the demo, AI ops, change management, uh, you could do vulnerability response, you could do security incident response, you could do risk management. This service could also become part of a service portfolio uh, when you build out your technology portfolio management. So the list goes on and on as to where this can be used. So the value in, in building out these maps is not to have the maps themselves, but it is to have the maps that can be used inside of your use cases. And that's all, folks. That is how you map a service in mere minutes using automated service suggestions for service mapping. Now, let's recap what you saw. I showed you the process to check your instance to see if it's ready using the application service readiness dashboard. That dashboard also helps you manage the health of your ML jobs, as well as to check if you have any ML issues in relation to services. And then I showed you the two tables, the TCP table and the process table that are prerequisites for ML-based service mapping. You need to have discovery, discover good process and TCP data. And then I showed you the process to create an application service using the application service candidates dashboard. We saw how we can map the service very quickly. And then we saw the connection rule that was automatically created. And then ultimately we came back to the screen you see here to set the status of the service map to operational so that it can be used. To wrap up, we just saw how you can gain business context of your infrastructure and applications in minutes by using ServiceNow. Our automated service suggestion solution for service mapping enables you to know where to begin for mapping your services, to map services faster and more accurately with just a few clicks, and to have ongoing visibility of new service candidates to be mapped. Service mapping is included with ITOM visibility, which is a suite of products that enable you to gain visibility of your entire estate. To learn more about how ITOM visibility can help your organization, please reach out to your ServiceNow account team.
Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.